Thank you so much to David and the ARF for this opportunity. And uh, thanks to you all for sticking around till the bitter end here. We actually can't see most of you, but we appreciate your uh, tenacity and we hope to entertain you in these last few minutes that's, and maybe teach you something too. That's right. So grand finale or dead last, you guys decide. Um, as a sign of our appreciation for sticking around, we have some TiVo tchotchkes in the back of the room on the table where the water is. If you stick through the whole thing, you're welcome to help yourself, but you have to stick around for the whole thing. We're trusting you. Yeah. So the marquee has a wedding in here at seven, so we better uh, get started. <laughs> We're talking today about the Super Bowl. Hopefully you all are aware TiVo has a stopwatch rating service where we track 350,000 anonymous subscribers every day and report on a second-by-second -second basis. So the day after the um, Super Bowl, we always report on the top commercials and top moments of the game based on what uh, our subscribers were doing that day. So then we're gonna show you the top four in-game videos and you'll vote on which one you think was number one. I should warn you, if you're a Patriots fan, you might wanna look away. I'm a Niner fan, I understand football pain. Then we're gonna talk about post-Super Bowl controversy, not exactly, um, not exactly wardrobe uh, malfunction, but still it caused quite a stir, a stir, and then some unexpected results. So this was from our press release the day after that showed live plus same day viewing. The x-axis is time by quarter and half time, and the percent of viewership is along the y-axis. And uh, probably worth mentioning, when we track second by second, um, we capture the play speed, uh, we count play speed seconds. So if you skip over a second, we don't count that. Uh, during the Super Bowl, much more prevalent is if you rewind and watch something more than once, it counts twice. Right. So the peaks are most viewed moments. So this was the whole game live plus seven days of viewing. And now we're gonna jump into the videos. The first video for you to see is Manningham's catch uh, about midfield, a pretty impressive catch. <laughs> Patriots fan. Manning has the shotgun set and back to throw. Finds the pocket, deep ball down the left sideline and it's gonna be caught. Was he inbounds? Yes, Manningham on the sideline. Okay, the second video is a very short clip from Madonna's halftime uh, performance, a little segment featuring MIA. And thank you. Her mother must be very proud. Probably not that surprised though. That's right, that's right, probably not shocked. The third clip is, might be one of the most unusual plays in the NFL, not just the Super Bowl. If you remember it, the New York Giants were trying to run out the clock and Bradshaw had a run up the middle and he found this huge hole and he got to the goal line and went, oh crap, I wanted to run out the clock and then his momentum carried him over anyway. Oops. Oops. And <laughs> the, last, uh, the last video that you're gonna vote on is Tom Brady's last second Hail Mary. Uh, pay special attention to Belichick's expression at the end of the video. And just as a side note, I always get a kick out of when Tebow throws a Hail Mary. It always seems very appropriate to me. <laughs> From the 49. Giants 
given the last rights by many in December are the Super Bowl champs in February. Now Jonathan will take you through what we learned after the game. Well, first, first it's oh, time sorry. to vote. First the vote, sorry. So press one through four, depending on what you think was the highest rated moment in the game. And I'd like to thank Alex for doing some fabulous sports casting there. I could never have done that. So after this, we'll transition into the nerd part of the presentation. <laughs> and it's your last time today. Who's the winner? Survey says. Oh, it's a smart crowd. I, I don't know what to say. Um, I think I'll just go right into the rest of the story and we'll talk about just how right some of you were. Um, and I will also say I'm, I'm happy to be up here presenting this because I think the first time I became aware of TiVo doing audience measurement was many years ago at the CTAM Research Conference. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on stage here, but sorry. Um, <laughs> And uh, they were showing the uh, tracking of the wardrobe malfunction moment. And so it, I think it fitting that we're wrapping up today with this. Um, turns out on game day, nobody really noticed that little um, mishap with MIA in the live viewing. And um, so this is an aggregation of everything that was viewed live or within one hour of the, um, that moment in the telecast. And you know, it's a little bump, but really no big deal. Um, as we started to go on, even that same day, uh, some of the news media started to pick up um, coverage of this, and people started to talk about it. And so even in the live plus same day viewing, I mean, you can see the sort of rising of the entire curve is just people going back and, and watching the whole halftime show again or watching the game after uh, more than an hour later. But um, you can also see the trajectory of the bump start to, to puff up a little bit there in the middle. And um, then the next morning, uh, as happy as we were in New York that the Giants had won, um, a huge chunk of the coverage of the game was about Fingergate. And so we started to hear everybody talk about this controversy. And again, I, I have to say, if you've ever listened to much of MIA's music or know much about her, not that huge of a surprise, but it got some pretty major coverage in the media. And that seemed to affect the viewing um, sending a lot of the people, at least who'd remembered uh, to leave, or who'd left the show on their TiVos, or who'd gone back and undeleted it as soon as the, the controversy popped up, to start to um, shape the curve a little bit um, more and go back and pick up that moment. And again, you see both the incremental viewing of the entire halftime show and the incremental viewing of just that one particular moment. And um, it kept picking up and building and by live plus three days, it was uh, getting pretty distorted. And then all of a sudden, uh, four days later, and uh, we don't have that to report, though we could find it out for you, um, Madonna started uh, to talk about how disappointed she was that as part of this very happy moment, and actually a really fantastic halftime show that she managed to pull off, that uh, MIA had injected this moment of negativity. And, um, I think this had perhaps the undesirable effect of sending yet still more people back um, <laughs> to watch the moment. And so by live plus seven days, uh, as uh, I believe 42% of you predicted, it had become the top moment in the entire Super Bowl, eclipsing even that fabulous Hail Mary at the very end of the game. And um, so here's what it looks like in the context of the entire halftime show, as opposed to just that little um, excerpt. And please don't take this the wrong way, but just a, a quick glimpse of, it does sort of look like something as it pops up there. And I, I couldn't resist. It, it was just, it was too easy. So um, that is our uh, report on this past year's Super Bowl, and hopefully something crazy and interesting will keep happening. Um, in each successive year because we really like uh, burning the midnight oil after the game and figuring out what happened. And um, that is all I have to say. So give us thank a shout you. if you have other questions. And otherwise, thank you very much. Thank and thanks you. for sticking around.